Hey guys, it's Milma here with another App Store submission tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to get your app ID and your provisioning profile. Uh, if you haven't been following this tutorial series, go check it out here. And in the previous tutorial, uh, we learned how to get our certificates and how to register our devices. Now, this is the second part to that tutorial, and after these two parts, we should be able to build our apps on our devices. So, the first thing we're going to need to do is get our app ID. So to get that, we're going to need to go to the iOS dev portal and the link will be in the description. So we're going to go over there now. So when you're in the dev portal, you're going to need to sign in, obviously, to get here. And uh, last time we looked at the certificates and the devices tabs. Now we need to go down to the app ID tab and the provisioning tab. Um, so the first thing we're going to need to do is make an app ID. So basically, an app ID is a unique kind of identifier that will let Apple know uh, which apps belong to you and which apps don't basically um, and so they consist of a randomly generated kind of seed uh, bundle seed um, that Apple will make and a kind of reverse identifier which is they call the reverse domain name naming I think um, <laughs> anyway so basically uh, there are two types of app IDs. One is a single app ID and the other one is what they call a wild card app ID. And uh, the difference is is the fact that a wild card app ID can be used with any app you want as long as the app isn't going to you know share data uh, with you know push notifications or in-app purchases. And that's another thing I forgot to mention. App IDs allow you to use iCloud, Game Center, keychain services, in-app purchases, push notifications so if you've ever wondered how you can actually send data to them you need a app ID to be able to send data to iCloud because iCloud will go oh what app is this? oh it's this app um, yeah okay so you need to have an app ID basically and to make an app ID uh, we're gonna go up here and we're gonna click new app ID as simple as that and here is just a name that we can use to uh, look at it in the uh, app ID section here and know which app ID it is. Now as I said there are two types of app IDs, one's a single app ID and the other one's a wildcard app ID. Uh, a wildcard can be used in any application as long as it's not going to be used for game center, in-app purchases or pr um, push notifications. So if your app is going to go to iCloud for instance uh, it, it can have this app ID. The only problem is if you've got an app that goes to iCloud and you've got another app that uses the same ID, if that app sends data to iCloud, it will modify the other data for the other app. So if you want multiple apps to use iCloud, I'd recommend making a new app ID for each app. Um, otherwise, just create a wildcard one. So this is going to be my wildcard universal app ID that any app can use. So it's going to be my universal app ID. Um, I'm not sure if I can use spaces. Anyway. What you're going to do here is you're going to select your user team ID. You can select the other ones in the option list, but I honestly don't know where this other option came from, so I'm just going to use my team ID. Um, and then what you're going to do here is basically add your own unique uh, suffix, is what they call it, on the end. So what you're going to do is use what they call the reverse domain name, re reverse domain name style. String. So you know how a domain name goes www.domainname.com. Well, now we're going to go the opposite. So we're going to go com dot, and then you're going to put something unique here. So I'm going to put my company name. Uh, it's not really a company. I kind of hate the name, but uh, we'll leave it at that. And then you're going to go dot. And then if it's a single app ID, you're going to put the app name here. So say my app is called app. That's the name I'm going to put there. That's a single app ID. If I want to use it for universal apps, every single app, I'm going to do an asterisk like that. And Apple will automatically delete the asterisk and put the app name there for me so I don't need to bother with it. So that's basically what you're going to need to do. I already have one, so I'm going to cancel. But when you've made one, it should appear down here. And it should tell you uh, what it's allowed for. So you can see I can use it for iCloud, but I can't use it for in-app purchases or Game Center because it's a... Um, it's a universal app ID. So once you've made this, you've got to make sure you remember what your domain name, you know, reverse domain main, reverse domain name thing was. Uh, you've got to make sure you remember that. Um, so now we've done that, we're going to need to go over to the provisioning here, 
and we're going to need to make a provisioning profile. So what this does is ties all the devices together into one profile that you can then send out and allow you to build on your devices. So what we're going to need to do is make a new profile, ignore the ones I've already got made, we're going to enter a name, so this is the development profile. We're going to have to make two, one for development, one for distribution. So I'm going to type in here development profile. Oh, if I can spell, God. Um, and you're going to select the certificate you made last time. Uh, remember we made certificates in the last video, it should pop up here. You're going to select that. Then you're going to select an app ID. Um, remember, if it's universal app ID, this profile can be used over and over again. If it's a unique ID, this has to be a unique profile as well. Remember that. So you have to create a new profile if it's going to be a unique ID. So I'm going to select my universal one here. And then the devices are should be down here, the device list you made last time. So whatever devices you added last time, they should appear down here. You're going to choose the ones you want to be able to build on. This is important. The ones you want to be able to build on. So maybe some of them you don't want to actually build on, you just want there for, you know, testing or beta or whatever. So I'm going to select the ones that I want to build on. And then I'm going to click Submit. Now I'm going to, not going to do that because I already have one. But when you click Submit, the status here should say Pending instead. So whilst we're waiting for this to pend, um, well, whilst we're waiting for it to come back and become active, we're going to go over to the distribution here and we're going to create a distribution profile. So we're going to click New Profile again. It's pretty much the same, apart from the fact we're going to click App Store, because that allows to distribute to the App Store. Ignore Ad Hoc for now, that will be a later tutorial. But we're going to click App Store here. Um, we're going to call this Distribution Profile. Again, we're going to select an App ID, and then we're going to click Submit. So when you're done with that, what you're going to need to do is download your distribution certificate and download your development certificate. So I'm going to download them now, and I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay guys, I'm back and as you can see, I've uh, created, well, I've downloaded my two profiles here, my distribution and my development profile. Uh, the next thing I'm going to need to do is let Xcode know about these profiles. Now that's really, really easy to do. We just select them and drag them on top of Xcode. And then Xcode should open up and it should show us, as you can see here, the two new profiles we've just made, the development and distribution profile. Now, if all has gone well, it should say valid profile down here, and that's good. If it doesn't say valid profile, the only, only thing I can think you can do uh, is either replay the tutorial or go down here, click refresh. When it's finished refreshing, if it still hasn't worked, click the renew button here that should say, uh, should appear next to status. If that doesn't work, then, you know, send me a message and I'll try and see what I can do to fix it. So that is it for this tutorial guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed. The next tutorial will be teaching you how to put uh, these uh, profiles onto your devices and then eventually building your app onto your device. So that will be the next tutorial. It can be found here. Um, so thanks for watching. If you have any problems just post a comment or send a message and I'll try and do my best to help. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at FailcakeApps to keep up with all the latest news. And uh, thanks for watching and see you in my next tutorial.